Hello everyone, I'm Trevor Howard, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about threatened groups of organisms by the valuable to medicine with a focus on coral reefs. So you may ask, why coral reefs? Well, coral reefs are one of the most uh, diverse yet threatened ecosystems in the world. Um, approximately 25% of all species found um, in the ocean are located on or around coral reefs. Uh, they have a very unique medical history. Um, what for example, uh, gallbladders or some, some fish were used uh, by ancient Polynesians and Pacific Islanders uh, to treat any number of injuries from stings to burns. Um, and they're filled with a, a plethora of very unique organisms uh, with unique adaptations, and we're going to kind of get into that as we go on here. Briefly, uh, some, some statistics. Uh, coral reefs cover about 600,000 square kilometers of the Earth. Um, and approximately their economic value is about $375 billion a year. Uh, they provide any number of ecosystem services uh, from fishing, shoreline protection, nutrient cycling, etc. cetera. Um, there's a whole list up here and there's plenty more things that they do. 15% uh, of the world's population actually lives within 100 kilometers of coral reefs. I know we don't um, and they may seem very distant to you, but they're very close to home for obviously a huge portion of the world's population. 56% um, of all coral reefs are considered at moderate to high risk from direct human impacts. That doesn't include anything else that's going on um, outside of our realm. And 27% of the world's reefs are actually considered dead. And at least half of this is due to climate change as, as the globe warms. So the issue here, obviously, is that coral reefs are in serious decline. And most of this is due to human interaction. Uh, firstly, um, Warming oceans cause coral bleaching, and when you're losing the coral, you're losing the habitat, and as you lose the habitat, you lose the fish, uh, and everything else that lives on the reefs. Right here's an example of a healthy coral full of uh, algae and bacteria, and once the water gets to a certain point, depending on the exact corals, um, it gets bleached, and it effectively is killed off. Uh, next up, we have uh, the pet trade and overfishing, um, specifically right now, cyanide fishing. Basically what happens are people go swim out in the, in the, on the uh, reefs and they look for like little crevices and whatnot in the coral and they'll take the little squirt bottle of cyanide as you can see there and they squirt it into a hole and it stuns the fish. Um, the fish kind of float out and they can capture it, ship it off back to here in the United States or somewhere else, goes into the pet store and you say, oh hey, I want to buy Nemo, so they put it in my tank. And like a week or two later, about 90% of the fish are dead. Um, and it's something that you don't notice right away, but um, if you've ever like bought a tropical fish and it's died pretty quickly after buying it, it's probably due to cyanide. And also the cyanide actually uh, really kills off the reef, the coral itself too. Uh, next up we have a brief video on dynamite fishing. In the remote coral reefs, marine biologists sometimes use dynamite. So what happens, I mean, uh, marine biologists used to do that, but nowadays it's more just people going out to get their own food. Uh, they throw dynamite in the water, so you can kind of see in the picture here. Um, blows up in the water. Uh, some fish float up to the surface, a lot sink to the bottom, um, and the people are happy because they're getting their food pretty easily. Uh, but at the same time, they're doing permanent damage to the coral. I mean, obviously, you're, you're blowing up the coral, and that's never good for uh, the coral reefs. Next on to here, we have uh, trawl nets. And basically what they are is you have big boats going around, um, they've got these very large nets with weights and uh, it gets dropped down to the ocean floor as you can see here and um, gets down to the ocean floor and you can see how it just kind of drags along the bottom there and they have uh, the, the black part right there is called rock hoppers and they're supposed to, they're designed to like bounce over rocks and everything but as it's going along the bottom it literally just like flattens everything turns what could be a coral reef into um, basically the equivalent of like a parking lot. As you can see some of these little things are getting smashed. There's a big boulder right there getting rolled along. And, I mean, you can see the obvious devastation to the, the landscape. Now getting on a little bit more, I have a couple general examples for you guys. I'm going to hit on the seahorse, uh, sponges, uh, the cone snail, and just coral in general. So um, in ancient remedies, especially in ancient Chinese medicine, uh, they use seahorses to treat anything from uh, kidney ailments to circulatory problems and impotence, among many other problems. Um, currently, uh, there's about 500 million tons of seahorses harvested every single year. That equivalents to about 20 million seahorses. And uh, there's little to no regulation on this, so people can go out and use any kind of methods they want. 
uh, to go capture these seahorses. And although uh, some like it's never been proved truly that like just uh, getting a dried seahorse, crushing it up and eating it is actually going to help you, um, people still do this. And there's a ton of populations that are in steep decline. Uh, moving on more to a bit more scientific uh, area, sponges and microbes uh, fit a very special niche in uh, medicinal use of uh, coral reefs. Uh, basically what happens is the sponges and the microbes kind of live in symbiosis where up to 50% of the, micro, uh, uh, the biomass in a sponge is composed of microbes. Um, just a couple examples here, the antiviral drugs ARA-A is extremely efficient in uh, fighting against herpes. Uh, ACTs, a uh, very broad uh, antiviral drug that can be used to kill any number of viruses. Um, the anti-cancer agent ARA-C was found off the coast of Florida and is especially uh, efficient fighting leukemia. Uh, Topsentin is a drug that's been derived from uh, sponges and it uh, has really potent anti-inflammatory <coughs> properties. And just to give you guys like an example of how uh, complex a single sponge can be, one sponge found in the Indian Ocean had 300 anti-inflammatory analogs. Um, these haven't all been derived, they haven't been figured out exactly how to be used, but just think about one single sponge could put out that many uh, different anti-inflammatory uh, drugs, it's, it's incredible. And the problem with sponges though is that they exist in pretty low numbers that are harvestable, and people can, they haven't really figured out a way to uh, harvest uh, sponges and grow them, like farming them, because a lot of times they don't take, and then at the same time if you put them in farms versus like out in their natural habitat, they don't usually develop the same kind of uh, antibodies. Moving on to cone snails, uh, the really unique thing about them is that they secrete one of the most powerful neurotoxins known to mankind. Um, this has actually been developed into a painkiller called uh, ziconotide, and it's actually strong in morphine, so you can see how that will kind of uh, play off as uh, something very vital to going into surgery, maybe someone's in the field with a battle wound, um, something that could even kick you up higher than morphine. It's, Incredible. Um, and then more on the broad corals. Uh, first off, they're the basis of the reef. Without the corals, you don't have anything else. You don't have the fish, you don't have the sponges, you don't have the microbes. Um, they've developed a plethora of painkillers from different uh, bodies in the corals. Um, one of the more interesting things that they've developed is there's actually a SPF su uh, 50 sunscreen that can be actually uh, just pulled directly from some corals, and it's actually uh, sold on the open market. Um, you could probably go downtown somewhere and, and buy it. Um, it's level as organic, and uh, but most importantly, uh, a lot of corals have antibacterial properties. Um, just think about the millions of years that they've evolved and developed uh, in the ocean without being able to move. Uh, at different algaes, bacteria, etc., have been coming and like trying to take over where their uh, bodies. But they've developed things, uh, antibacterial properties that actually can kill off some of the the most uh, powerful superbugs in the land. So. This is really uh, coming into play right now where uh, some of these mega strains of viruses and uh, bacteria are actually being uh, turned away by that. Um, so you may, you may be asking, uh, why does this matter? And the uh, big take home message here is that coral reefs are one of the most threatened ecosystems in the world. And one of the major ecosystem services they provide is the me uh, medicinal value of all its organisms. They're also extremely valuable in a plethora of different ways um, for food, uh, ecotourism, I mean, who doesn't want to go like swim out in the ocean, uh, nice blue, clear water, look at the beautiful coral reefs, see the fish, the eels, the corals, a bunch of bright colors. Um, and then also, just think about how uh, humans are totally devastating these beautiful, wonderful ecosystems. Um, every day you're driving a car, you put a little more CO2 in the atmosphere, um, that's warming up the atmosphere, then the ocean warms up. So it's just all the little things that every single person kind of does. So just try to think about that. And then uh, the true medicinal potential is just beginning to be tapped. We know a lot about the rainforests and we, we've uh, explored that a lot, but the realm of actually exploring coral reefs has really only come into a uh, big time play for the last decade, decade and a half. Um, and then I have one last video here for you guys. Just thinking about how you can get involved. Uh, this is Colleen Flanagan. Um, she's from Portland and she invented BioRock. Jewelry, I sculpt mixed media, I spin dog hair into yarn, I use chicken wire, I use cement, I use found objects, I use paint and draw. If I can make stuff, I don't know what I would do. I'm making a bio rocker. It's a boat, 
It's also simulating an underwater sculpture that would be for coral reef restoration. So many people were dynamite fishing and bombing and the corals were dying, the fish were going. You can chemically accrete calcium carbonate onto metal structures. It makes the coral go two to six times faster. This was a case of taking metal and electrical current and helping nature to grow back. This is for an event at OMSI, the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry here in Portland. You can see the rest of the video when this gets posted, but I uh, just want to give you guys a brief video of something that you could do potentially. Thanks. Any questions?